What is up, guys? Real Shocker, Real Shocker 96 High Jog here with our Week 2 G8DL Week 2 Team Builder versus the Commissioner of this league, Jimmy Agents, Dark City, Dark City Blooms, or Dark City Houndooms. I don't remember what your name was. Key thing is, we're going against Jimmy. If you guys can't hit that like button down below, it haven't already, and subscribe to join the Real Shocker crew today because you'd be fun rolling with the King of the Crew. If I do yawn like I am right now. <sighs> Go I be, I'm tired. It's 9 p.m. my time, so it is what it is. But um, we're going to get Jimmy, and Jimmy's team is actually kind of threatening, and this was a bit of a struggle build. I don't know if I can really win this one. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, there's definitely some options with this team between Sticky Webs, Trick Room, just pure offensive. I just don't know how I feel about this team, um, but I'm going to see and see if we can do our best. Um if you can look at his team, his G Max Pokemon is G Max Flapple because of Hustle. He's also got Whimsicott, uh, Orb Beetle, Sil Valley, all types, Sincino, Duraludon, Reuniclus, him on top, Jellicent, Hatterene, and Rhydon. So a lot of Trick Room options, but also a lot of good Sticky Web options. And this team can also function fine without Sticky Webs as well. So this is a uh, very interesting team. And <sighs> There's one mon I think on this team that's going to be the focal point of winning this game. Or at least two, one of the two, but let's go ahead. Um, these are the six I mainly see him to bring. Um, there is a chance we could see him on top, or Uniclus, and maybe Jelson. I don't think Hatterene really comes this game because he's already got enough duplicate typings. I don't think he needs that many duplicate typings for his team. Right on, I don't think it really makes any sense whatsoever. My coverage on my team and some of my team is just checks are really good. Jealous is something I can kind of see not coming because of the fact that it's not that good matchup wise. Like, get shut down by Lapras, the water absorb, and it has to run things like Willowisp and, Willowis and stuff like that. Um, and again, him on top, just Intimidate could be a bit of a problem with my team because of Defiant. He's in Reuniclus, could potentially come, but I think I just put the combination of Master Sword, a Selgor, and all that. I just think I check it. So that's why I see six up there as the six are in. Double Grass is going to be a little bit risky for him to bring versus my team, but. So let's break down the team we're bringing for you guys today. First off, we've got our mix, our physically, our mixed defensive, more of a physically defensive aromatise. But this aromatise is going to be something nasty because this is the low, low key going to be the mon that can win us the game. Trick Room, Nasty Plot, Moonblast. He has got no sw safe switch into Nasty Plot. Not even Duraludon can take this Nasty Plot head. The only mon that we can take it is he sell Valley Poison or he sell Valley Steel. If he doesn't have either of those Solali Forbes, nothing. And I, excuse me, nothing is safe from Perfume. Once you get that trick up, I'm always clicking Nasty Plot first, and then I'm clicking Moonblast, 100%. We're on 128 HP investment, 136 in the physically defensive, 124 in special attack, 120 in depth, just to give us a lot of bulk on this mod, and then we just pretty much start setting up versus him. So, this is 100% going to be one of the main mons that we can win this game with because of the fact he doesn't have what he has. So, up next, it's the debut of Ninjago here, our Selgor, and this Selgor can very well just win this game. 100%. Toxic Spice plus 3 attacks just basically ends him. If I can get Toxic Spikes on his, up on the side of his field, he literally does not bring it. If he doesn't bring a Rabbit Spinner, this is 100% my lead. If I do see a rep spinner, I'm not going to leave the thing right off the bat. Because then I can save it for late game. But again, if I can get my hat, those spikes up, I win this game. Because I can shift things down. But on that, Bug Buzz plus Sludge Bomb plus Focus Buzz has no safe switching on his team whatsoever. I literally beat everything on his team with these three moves. And that's why I'm running the Sticky Hole. It's really risky because now Knockoff will always do a lot of damage to me. But with Sticky Hole, I can hold my life orb and then I can just deal about that damage I need. Running max special attack modus, 156 HP investment in speed, because with the speed I now outspeed speed everything on his team, and the rest went into semi for this, but it's primarily this thing's job is to basically get the sock spikes up and then just beat his team. Because he never stays in with a cell a cell guard versus that because the cell guard beats it. So that's why I have Sludge Bomb on there just to guarantee beat the one thing. Bug was hits everything else, so that's why I want. I'm actually reading the Master Sword here with Expert Belt. Um, I was really torn on how exactly I wanted this set to work exactly, but this is a model that can function in that Trick Room as well if they really get it under there. Sword Stance, Shadow Sneak, Iron Head, and sorry, Sacred Sword really again just checks this team coverage. 
Hits everything for super effective to neutral damage. Shadow Stakes good as priority. Iron Head is really good just for general stab. And Sacred Sword is there to primarily just be able to hit and beat Shinsino because Shinsino cannot do anything except knock off. So that's something we have to be very careful of as well in this matchup. But we're running max HP, 132 attack with an Adam in nature, 8 in defense, and 116 speed def. I'm giving myself a little more speed def bulk because of this matchup, and I really think speed def bulk is going to be a little more important than physical to bulk. I'm going to be looking really stupid for this probably, but I think it's the best way to handle his team. And definitely when I get into Swords Dance, I have to swap out basically in order to do anything. If anything, I can also just attack because then I can have my sword shield form. Up next, we're in the debut of It's Lit! The Rotom with a Choice Scarf. Now, this is a very interesting Rotom set here. We're running max HP, 112 in special attack with a modest nature, 144 speed. With the speed, I outspeed max speed timid Whimsicott, because I am actually speed creeping for Whimsicott, basically. With the Scarf. And then Overheat basically kills anything. Volt Switch is good for pivoting. will o is primary there just to burn some important targets that I need burned. And Thunderbolt is there just in case I want to just spam, if I have the chance to spam Thunderbolt over Overheat in that sense of regard. Because then that's more safer for my team, and it benefits my team more because of damage output and stuff like that. And again, I don't really see right on coming, so I can always click Volt Switch against this entire team and get the momentum going on my side in that sense of the regard. <sighs> oh, excuse me. And I just really think Rotom can do a lot in this game. So we just got to play our Rotom smart, and then if we can play our Rotom smart, we basically will potentially just pick up a win for this game, and Rotom can do some work. Up in next week in his debut is Tarzan the Rillaboom. We have Drum Beating, Drain Punch, Bulk Up, Acrobatics. I'll go to that in a second. We're running Adamant Nature with 136 HP investment, 132 attack, 104 in defense, and 136 spadef. A really defensive Rillaboom this week, and you may be asking yourself, why am I running this and not Leftovers? Well, I think this is the set we really needed for Rillaboom this week. This thing gets a bulk up, it then takes a hit from Orbital, and then with the Tango Berry, I click Acrobatics and pick up a kill. This could also be potentially one of my leagues um, going against Tim. So definitely something I'm going to be on the lookout for when facing him and his team. But Tarzan could win this game if I get a bulk up up. I get at least one bulk up up and then start clicking drum beating and drain punch. I then win this, win this game. And if my item gets taken out of the equation, then I can just click acrobatics. Now, I could run no item and then acrobatics, but then he's going to be thinking to himself, wait, did he forget an item for his Pokemon? Like, that's the one thing I want to do. I want him to get tricked that this thing gets acrobatics and trick him to fart that he will not know that I would bring an acrobatics in this game. Acrobatics is primarily there just to touch the Whimsicott, though. So it's going to have to be something we got to be careful. we got to hope that just get a bait in, that we don't have it. And then when the right time comes, he goes for the bug type move and tries to kill me. I live, I can go for the Acrobatics at plus one, and then boom, pick up a KO, and then just start clicking buttons versus his entire team. And that's its regard. And last but not least, we have Weakness Policy Lapras. Lapras can't do very much this game. I'm going to say that right now. It can't really wall out of his team and everything like that. But what I decided to do is, since I'm going to have my HP in stat, what the goal is is to get my Gigantamax up before his Flapple does. And then the goal is to hopefully just be weakened down and not take it out. Because I am actually, if I'm going to run that, then I can't run that. I have to run the Sassy. We're going to run the Sassy Namer and we're going to run those 8 in attack. We're going to run the 8 in We're running 196 HP for a lot of bulk. 8 in attack investment, 116 in special attack, and 188 defense. Really spadef bulky this week, because this way I can take one hit from Whimsicott and Flapple. Once I, I more likely Whimsicott from when I G-Max, because Whimsicott always stays in and always clicks a move. And the best thing is, I have no way of being taunted. Ice Shard's really good, because it's really good priority in case I need to chip down or beat down Flapple, in case he does not have his berry intact or anything like that. And then I could just win. Freeze Dry again, Aurora Veil's really nice. Surf, I really didn't need, I only really need my dual stabs for this matchup because it just checks so much on this team. Freeze Dry is there for Jealous Sand, so pretty much my two main attacks, Surf and Ice Beam will just clean house. But uh, yeah, we're, that's going to be the uh, team here for our Week 2 match. I honestly don't know if we're going to win this one here, guys. It's a really tough matchup for me. But we're going to try our best and see if we can pick up a win. But all being else, I have been Phil Shocker, the 96 Hedgehog. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, guys, I've been Phil Shocker, the 96 Hedgehog. Peace.